Quetico Provincial Park is one of the most sought after canoe destinations in Canada and for a good reason. There's no other park that gives the same limitless potential to plan your trip. This is what a six day, 110 kilometer journey through Quetico can look like. Quetico is located just south of Atacocan, Ontario, bordering a Boundary Waters canoe area in northern Minnesota. There are 21 possible access points to the park in Canada with, get this, 600 lakes, 587 portages, and a staggering 2200 campsites scattered through the 5,000 square kilometers of lake systems and the Canadian Shield. I charted a 110 kilometer loop starting at French Lake, taking me to Chatterton Falls, through Sturgeon Lake and back finishing at French Lake. I launched around noon at French Lake and within moments was in the long winding creek connecting into Pickerel Lake. I really enjoyed this creek. I saw tons of wildlife and just felt really peaceful. It was a great way to start the trip. Before long, I was in Pickerel Lake, a huge lake that stretches 18 kilometers across the northern part of the park. And I had a perfect day for paddling, warm, sunny, and only a slight breeze. I went south out of Pickerel, down a small channel, finally arriving at my first portage. Five hours in, so a lot of paddling today. And I'm up at the Beaver Dam here going into, I think it's Bisque Lake. Still probably got another couple hours to get to the ideal spot for tonight, but I'm feeling good. I think I can get there. I went through a series of small lakes Bisque, Beg, and Bud. All three of these lakes were really pretty and it was a perfect way to wind down the first day, paddling through as the sun set low in the horizon behind me. I finished my first day at Fern Lake, choosing an island campsite with a gorgeous view of the darkening pastels of the evening twilight sky. I launched the next morning and before long, the rain started coming down hard and it pretty much didn't stop all day. I powered through as quick as I could to a campsite near Chatterton Falls, and the next morning I went into the falls to check them out. It's a pretty cool falls chain and definitely worth stopping in, but probably not planning an entire trip around getting here. I headed east out of Russell Lake into Sturgeon Lake, and around here is where the park really began to feel a little more remote. I stopped at a five-star campsite for a quick lunch and enjoyed the afternoon sun on the awesome high rocky cliffs before continuing on. I went north through Lonely Lake, through a very challenging swamp, and finally into Walter Lake where I spent the night. Day four, I woke up to a crazy fog. It didn't take long to clear though, and when it did and the sun started coming through, this was really the point in the trip where I started to allow my brain to sink into the present and appreciate every sound, feeling, smell, and sight around me. Looking out onto the glass calm Walter Lake as I started my day, man, I really love being out in places like this. Now, this was by far my favorite day of the trip. I didn't see a soul other than some occasional wildlife. I had a pretty short day planned, so I took my time exploring Elizabeth and Jesse Lake. Elizabeth Lake in particular was one of my favorites of the trip. Then I came to Maria Lake where I made camp at what quickly became my favorite campsite of the trip. Coda and I spent the afternoon and evening getting some much needed rest and recreation. It's a fine balance on trips like this. You want some days where you really have to push yourself hard to give the trip some stakes and make it more meaningful, but throwing a few slow days like this are really the icing on the cake. The moments you remember are the ones where you slow down enough to appreciate them, and they mean more the harder you have to work to get them. Well, that's my philosophy anyway. On day five, one last short portage and I was back into the west end of Pickerel Lake. I made it about halfway across to a really nice island campsite where I enjoyed my last evening out in Quetico. My final day was a straight shot east across the vast Pickerel Lake. Though I probably enjoy smaller lakes more than big open ones like this, Pickerel Lake is really beautiful. Back through the creek and the takeout at French Lake, concluding my trip. Overall, Quetico is a really cool park and it's no surprise that it's one of Canada's most popular canoeing destinations. While it may not be as remote as some of the other Northern Ontario parks, I mean, it definitely has its advantages as well. I hope this video helped you get a sense of what it's like and if it'll make your list. Wherever you end up, make sure you take time to appreciate this amazing country that we're all so lucky to call home.
It's a beautiful world we live in. Get outdoors and enjoy it.